Dustin Ryder with you. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with my review of the Power Rangers Legacy Figures Wave 3. This review is pretty late because it honestly took me forever to track every single one of these guys down. In fact, it was the Black Ranger that I finally found last. Apparently, I've heard of other people having, or having, having problems finding those as well, but I literally like found it a day before I finally recorded this. Uh, the other two I also found in two separate like times. Like I think I found yellow and white together and then the two space, but it was weird. Like the only time I've ever seen all these guys together was actually when I found in space black. I have seen uh, yellow and white shell forming quite a bit, um, but never like all of them together. It's been a really weird journey trying to find these guys and I could do a whole video about the weird legacy distribution and like the girl shelf warming but let's just set that aside so this wave we finish off the MMPR rangers with white and yellow and we finish off the space rangers with blue black and pink and we also get the requisite pieces to finally finish building after three waves the original megazord and that that was the three wave one this wasn't three waves but two waves to build the astro megazord um, we'll take a look at those in a second uh, but let's just go ahead and start in on the figures um, pretty much the same if you're familiar with them from the other reviews I think they're all pretty good looking figures. I think they're a good balance between the more sort of muscular tones, although the girls don't really have it quite as much, um, but the more muscular tones and the actual more slender appearance of the Rangers. I think they did a pretty good job on yellow overall. I think for the most part the head sculpt or the helmet sculpt is pretty solid. I feel like the ears seem a little bit weirdly short and rounded. It could just be me though, but I feel that they should just be a smidge pointier. But other than that I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, same thing with the coloring here. Uh, you can see the belt is the one where it's silver, but it does have nice detailing on there uh, for the saber tooth tiger. The only thing it comes with is the holster and then um, the blade blaster in its concealed mode, and this was like super bent when I got it out of the packaging. Not like from me getting it out of the packaging, but just like this is what it was like before I got it. So that's disappointing. There's also a whole other issue to go into with the weapons they come with. I would at least would like them to come with like the actual blaster or dagger mode for their sidearm instead of the concealed mode, honestly. Um, but the articulation is the same. You get a nice hinge joint around here, some solid around movement, swiveling here. You get a nice elbow joint here, some swiveling at the hands on a little ball joint. You actually get a pretty wide range of motion there. Leg joint here, you get a solid range of motion. Swiveling there, it kind of creates some weird discrepancies in the thigh, but you do get it. Double knee joint there. It's a kind of, uh, there's a couple joints on here, like here and on the, not so much on the elbows on these, but on the uh, the guys are those little kind of geary joints where you can feel the, feel like little gears clicking. Um, then you have a nice little ball joint here on the foot. That's overall pretty nice articulation, like almost on par with figure arts. Unfortunately, these are on and off plagued with some loose joint problems, like one of her arms is loose for me. Um, and the mold for her is the same as pink, so I'm not really going to bother going over it. Uh, same with the guys, they're all the same mold, the only difference is being, for example, pink's skirt will hinder her movement slightly, and obviously, um, you know, white has the armor, which will affect his shoulders pretty minimally, but it is something different. I keep getting her to stand when I bring her back over to pose, but then when I try to do this, there we go. Alright, so we have White Ranger, who's the only one um, to come with his signature weapon, because it kind of makes sense, since Saba's pretty... Well, signature, and it's actually really well done, really nicely painted, especially the silver here, I'm impressed with how shiny it looks, so they did a good job on that. I think they did a pretty good job with the head sculpt, I still feel like they haven't fully perfected the White Ranger head sculpt with all the figures we've gotten. I think the closest we've ever gotten, in my opinion, was the uh, Legacy... Or not like I see the Chaser uh, Super Legends figures because the White Ranger's visor I feel is a little bit like thicker this way, um, but it's still it's a pretty nice figure. I think they did a really good job on the chest armor here. It's kind of got that that shine that it does in the show sometimes depending on how you look. But the articulation is going to be the same for this basically as the girls, um, just you know guy parts. That sounded weird. And then like his is arguably a little bit more. Well, it is a little bit more uh, hindered by the. Um, the chest armor, but it's not like a huge deal, like there's been worse. Uh, but I think it's an overall really nice figure. Oh, and you do have uh, chest articulation here, I forgot to mention that as well, which is a little weird looking joint, but I don't know, I don't know why I went for that, but yeah. It's a nice looking White Ranger figure, and the White Ranger suit is one of my more favorite designs, so I'm happy to have this even though we have quite a few variations on a lot of the MMPRs. Um, 
especially like the Tommies and Reds. These were the ones I was most excited for, uh, the In Space ones, because it's one of my favorite series, and these are ones where we were in need of an update for the figures. Um, we have so many different MMPR versions, but really the only versions of, M of In Space we have are the originals, and then the, the one for like Red and stuff that we did for the, the five inch action heroes during, uh, uh, Super Mega Force, but so these I think are really nice. I think especially since they don't have armor, um, this one shows off a sort of mix between the more muscular figure we like to do and the, um, you know, more slender approach. And I think the in space figures are really nice. All they, all three of them only come with their side little Astro Blaster, which again is nicely painted. They don't come apart or anything, but that's it. And like, while it would be nice to get their individual weapons, which I might talk about at the end, but at least they have a weapon that's a weapon and not just like it's holstered mode. Here we have the elusive Black Space Ranger. Apparently like it was a conceptual figure release where Carlos was hiding, uh, like just like in the episode where he accidentally hit Cassie. Um, I guess Adam helped get him back on shelves, but uh, he, I've seen a lot of people that have had problems finding him, but yeah. I'm happy to finally complete these. Check out his blurry back. I don't know why like it all of a sudden decided, all oh, the black, I can't focus on it. That sounded weird. All right, so now we got Pink, who's in a really weird like cheerleader -y pose. I wasn't sure what to do with that. Um, but also a really nice figure. I think they did, the girls come off a lot more slender in terms of like they don't have the crazy muscles, which is nice because they don't give them the weird proportions like the Turbo or In Space figures did. I feel like the color on her paint is a little weird. I, I remember, uh, the suit being a little bit more of a light pink. This is kind of almost a hot pink, which is kind of weird. Uh, like I said, articulation is largely the same. You just have the skirt piece here, which is a little bit flexible. Like, you know, you could probably cut it here a little more if you wanted to give it more range. Or, like, honestly, if you just, this is going to sound weird, but stretch it out, you know, and it'll give you more range later. So th that's at least nice. I also feel like her head sculpt is a little thinner compared to I feel that the, the helmet on Pink's is a little fatter, if that makes any sense. It's hard to describe. But still, it's a really nice figure, and I think the In Space ones look really nice and clean and just really good. Here's the altogether original Megazord now that we finally have the pieces, which also I think is really nice looking. I think it got the proportions pretty well done. It's a little blah in places, like the silver looks, or the gray, I should say, looks really cheap. And I feel the feet look really weird, almost stylized. But other than that, it's a really nice figure, and it's got some good articulation. It is kind of a mix between, uh, with all of these Build-A-Figures, that the joints are kind of hard to get on, and sometimes when you're trying to pop one of the joints in, another will pop off. Like, for example, these are tighter joints when I was trying to pop on, but these would frequently pop off, and then the legs would pop off. But you basically get a version of the articulation you get on the... Um, the figures proper. The head can't move up and down quite as much, but it does move up and down a little bit and side to side, which is a huge plus, which um, I always mention that mainly in like things that won't be as articulated. The head articulation, even subtle HUD, or, HUD head articulation can really make the difference in giving something personality. All right, here's the main event for the Megazords for me, which is the Astro Megazord. I was really looking forward to this one because we don't really have very many figures of this. Again, we have so many representations of this. And this is my favorite Megazord of all time. Um, spoiler alert for whenever I do my top Megazords video. But you get the same articulation. And I think they did a really nice job on it. Um, like I said, the only complaint I really have is that the silver gray is a little bit blah and cheap looking. But otherwise, it's really nice to have an articulated version of this Megazord. And I think they got the proportions pretty spot on. The head seems a little tiny. I think they could have stood to, to uh, scaled it up a bit. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with this, honestly. Like, it's mainly minor nitpicks. Like, there definitely could have been things better done about it, but it's just really nice to have an in-space uh, Megazord figure. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this. Overall, this is a pretty solid wave. If you're an InSpace or Mega Ranger fan, I can definitely recommend checking out the figures if you can find them. If you've already started the MMPR ones, I can also recommend, you know, checking those out. I still think they're, they're pretty nice figures. There's definitely a lot of mess around them. My main complaints, I mean, it's... It's weird they can't come with weapons. I, I'm not as mad about that as other people, but considering other companies that do these types of figures are able to include the buildable part and the weapon, and people always say, well, it's a money thing, but then how are they able to do it? And I also think that it's a mistake to split up the Megazords based on season. Like, this wave should have been all one Megazord. Like, let's say it was all Astro Megazord. It doesn't matter if MMPR comes with the Astro Megazord arms, because Marvel and DC and other figures that do this will have 
build the pieces that aren't necessarily directly associated with them. Like, it's ridiculous that it took us three waves to complete this one. And um, I'll, more of a, a complaint on my side is that I wish they did come with changeable hands, especially since they don't have weapons. Um, it comes off as awkward that they have these hold weapons hands when they're in really generic poses. Like, that's something that bothers me. But I might even do a ramble on that at some point, but there's a lot to be said about the weird, messy state of the Legacy line where Bandai's acting like they're the first people to ever attempt this and they're running around with their head cut off even though people have been doing it for like 10 years. So, uh, but let's set that aside. I went on a tangent I didn't want to go to, but setting that aside, this is a nice wave. We don't know how much longer this will continue. You know, it's kind of, not really up in the air right now, but it's definitely touch and go, I feel. But if you are an In Space fan especially, I can recommend checking these out. Just because, like I said earlier, we've had so many many versions of MMPR figures, and we will probably have even more, but this is the first real good update of InSpace figures, so I definitely want to say uh, to check those out. But anyway, sorry for the little tangent there at the end. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Stossom Rider, signing out.